and good morning. It's a Saturday morning and I'm starting on a new project and I've decided to vlog the process of making it. I'm calling this dress the Marilyn dress because it's based off of a gown that Marilyn Monroe wore in 1951 to the Oscars and I really love this dress. It's detailed and beautiful. It's got an illusion neckline. It's very structured but it still has a beautiful natural silhouette and I just fell in love with this gown and when it came to making my own I wanted to do something inspired by it. But I'm wearing this dress to a semi-formal wedding so it will be toned down a little bit and the hemline will be raised from the floor. I'm making this dress out of a polyester shanting base with a Chantilly lace overlay and I also have some gorgeous free netting in a light tan color which matches the shanting. And of course I have things like boning and bra cups and boning tips and all sorts of other notions which will get put into this dress to give it the structure and silhouette it needs. I will be taking you guys along with me and stopping to talk in between the steps and tell you how things are coming along and how my design is going. I might skip a few steps here and there just because this dress is very complicated. It's going to be a time consuming drafting process as well as a time consuming construction process even though the overall dress looks quite simple. Of course if you want to read the full write up process of how I made this dress with all the steps mentioned and shown I will have a blog post about that linked in the description box. I hope you guys enjoy this project and enjoy coming along with me as I make it. And I hope I enjoy it too but we'll have to see. <laughs> So on the left is my original sketch, and I'm not planning on following that completely. I was just looking at reference photos of the dress and doodling around trying to figure out what the understructure might look like. I will have photos of the dress this one is based off of in the description box, or you can just Google Marilyn Monroe 1951 Oscars, and you'll get a whole page of pictures about it. So this is the pattern I draped last night. It looks like it's a five-piece pattern, but it will actually be a ten-piece pattern. This piece will be cut on a fold, and then this line you see here is actually going to be a separate piece, which is all cut as one, made out of a contrasting material. So that's what's going to give it the illusion neckline, since that will be made out of a flesh tone fabric, and the rest will have a black overlay, so it really won't look like skin except for that top portion, which is going to give the illusion that the neckline is deeper than it actually is. This is a guideline for the bust cups, or the underwire. And then I have all sorts of little tick marks to make sure that I can get all the pieces back together the way they should be. After I finished that, I transferred all the pieces onto tracing paper. And the reason I use tracing paper is because I just laid my pieces down flat, put the tracing paper over top, and I could trace all the little tick marks and lines and guidelines for things like the underwire. And it just made everything a lot easier. This is only the first pattern. So this pattern is to cut out my mock-up to see how it fits. This is not going to be the final pattern, it's just one of the many ones that I will use to try and get the fit correct. So here's the mock-up. I made it out of leftover fabric from my IKEA curtain dress, and I lightly boned the front, and I added plastic boning as stand-in underwire, and I also pinned in the cups just temporarily to see how they would look. It fits okay. I think it will fit really well once all the boning's in, but I don't want to cut the boning and then potentially have it be too short for the finished bodice. I'm going to leave lots of seam allowances just in case it doesn't fit well, then I will be able to make alterations without having to start over. So this is what the back looks like. I am going to be leaving a little bit more room in the back, and then I have some other alterations to make too. I'm adding one quarter inch to the bust. I have to take the bust seam in a little bit. I have to lengthen the waistline. I have to make the back of the armhole a little bit smaller. I don't like the way it gapes. And then I have to lower this panel by an additional quarter inch before lengthening everything by a quarter inch. Um, and I think that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and alter my pattern and then make the final pattern. Oh, and the biggest change I've decided to make is instead of having a seam here to give the illusion neckline, I'm just going to make it all out of the black lace overlay because it has a low enough neckline already. It does not need an illusion neckline as well. <laughs> So here is the new and improved pattern. I didn't make a whole lot of changes aside from the ones that I mentioned earlier. It was just lengthening pieces and taking them in a little bit at certain points. I transferred them onto new paper. Obviously since the pieces got bigger I had to redraw them out. 
and I've copied the guidelines like for the underwire and also created new guidelines for where boning will be. There will be boning in every single seam and there will be boning in the center front as well to keep the bodice stiff and straight against my chest so it doesn't fold over and reveal anything that really shouldn't be revealed. I'm going to go downstairs and get lunch for now because I'm quite hungry and then I will come back and make another mock-up and if that looks good then I'll be able to carry on with making the real thing. So it's after 6 o'clock now and I've only filmed two clips and I haven't filmed anything since lunchtime. But I promise I've been working. I came upstairs after lunch and spent more than two hours cutting out and assembling and sewing all the boning channels into the structural layer. And I chose to make it out of a quilter's cotton, which isn't the strongest fabric, but all the boning channels are backed with canvas and then covered with ribbon. So none of the boning channels are going to warp and I will be sewing waist tape into it so I'm not concerned about the fabric stretching in that direction either. So I think even though it isn't the strongest fabric in the world, it will still be an okay foundation for this bodice. So let's talk a little bit about some of the structure. <laughs> in here there are going to be two pieces of hooping wire, then two pieces of metal boning. This will be hooping wire, this will be hooping wire, I just haven't sewn the channels in yet. I already put the spiral steel in here, which is the underwire for the bra cups. There's going to be plastic boning in the bust area just to keep it up, but not to compress the bust. And then over here, there's going to be spiral steel. This will be steel. Um, and I think that's it. So there's a ton of boning packed into this bodice. So it'll take me a while to get everything measured and cut out. And then it'll take me even longer to file all of them down and to tip them. But that's my goal for tonight, is to get everything ready to be inserted tomorrow. Here's the base layer. I inserted all of the plastic and spiral steel boning because I tip those with metal tips or just file them down so they don't need to be set overnight. These ones are tipped with tape and then dipped in nail polish, so I had to do them last night so they would be dry this morning. Now I'm going to insert all of those and then I'll be sewing a half inch away from both edges so I can remove the pins which are currently functioning as stoppers to prevent the boning from getting out. And once the pins are removed, I can baste a zipper in and see how it fits. So, so I've just tried this on and the fit at the waist and bust and everything is perfect. I'm really happy with it. Unfortunately, I think it's a little bit too long in the waist, just by like a quarter of an inch. But, and I may live to regret this, I think I'm just going to leave it because this will have a sash and it will have a draped neckline which is really going to shrink the length of my torso. That quarter inch will give me a much nicer silhouette. It does make it quite uncomfortable to wear because it digs in at my waist, but I'm hoping that once the skirt is done, which will be worn over several layers of petticoats. I'll have a little bit of padding at the waistline, which will prevent anything from digging in or bruising at my waist. I'm going to just sew the bra cups in, because right now they're just pinned, and then I'll move on to cutting out the lining. So, exciting stuff. I have decided to go back to my original plan and to give it an illusion neckline. The reason I'm doing that is because this base layer has such a higher neckline than my mock-up. And I think what happened is that the mock-up didn't have boning in the bust, so it just sort of collapsed and puckered over the breast, which made the neckline look much deeper than it actually was. And now that this base layer has boning holding up the bust, it stays where it's supposed to be, and it looks a lot higher, which is fine. It was pretty deep in the mock-up, so I'm not upset that it's a little bit more modest, but it does mean that I feel comfortable adding the illusion neckline. Now I'm not going to have it go all the way around the bodice because that would be a major pattern adjustment and I also don't think it will really add to the design. I'm just going to do it right there across the front two panels. I'm very happy that I get to add this design element back into the bodice because it's one of my favorite things about the original dress. On the right you can see the alterations I made to the pattern. I combined the top inch and a half of it into one piece and added seam allowances so they can be sewn together. The lining is all cut out, which means I can take the pins out of it and assemble it. And the lining's done. It went together really nicely and really quickly. It's made out of cotton sateen, which is a little bit stretchy and thicker than you really want lining to be. 
but I didn't have a whole lot of options. I don't have a lot of lining fabrics just sitting around. So I use this and it should be fine. It just isn't ideal. All right, so now I get to work on the top layer of the bodice. I did up the first two front pieces of the top layer of the fabric and I didn't do the best job attaching the lace portion to the illusion neckline but I am going to be putting or attaching the collar right here. I'm also going to have a spattering of rhinestones there so I don't think you'll be able to see the slightly sloppy stitch work so I'm inclined to not redo it even though I feel a little bit icky about the decision because it isn't perfect and I want it to be perfect but I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, Good morning! So it's Monday now. I'm really happy with how much I got done this weekend. I have the lining completely assembled. I have the base layer sewn together with the boning in it and I have the top layer assembled which I got done last night. I'm really happy with that. There's obviously still a lot left to go but in my opinion that is a great start. Today I want to get the facings drafted and sewn into the bodice and I would also like to get the edges of the base layer turned over. And then those two layers will be ready to be tacked together. Um, if I can get the tacking done today as well that would be awesome. So that's what I will be working on today, and we'll see how it goes. So this is the top layer of the bodice, and it's made up of one layer of ivory shanting with two layers of petticoat net and one layer of the lace, which gives it that dark grayish black color. And then the top piece is just two layers of shanting. I'll show you in the interior too. Just looks like that. Right now, I'm going to trace the neckline onto another piece of shanting, measure two inches away from that, and cut it out and then sew with the right sides facing each other and once it's turned over I will have a pretty finished neckline. Alright, I've pinned the base layer to the front layer of fabric and there was supposed to be a three quarter inch seam allowance on the bottom. I don't know if you can tell but that's not three quarters of an inch. That's between half an inch and one quarter of an inch which is not great and in certain areas I've had to buckle the boning just to turn that edge over at all. I can't really try it on and see how it looks right now because there are pins in it, so I'm going to sew the bottom edge down and then see what it looks like worn, and worst comes to worst, I will have to add a band to the bottom of the bodice, which I don't really want to do, but that's better than having boning that's buckled like that. So The facing is sewn in and so is the base layer, and it really does not look that pretty from the interior but I think it's gonna work. It is a little tight. I don't know why this keeps happening. It seems like no matter how many inches I add at the back, my bodices end up a quarter inch too small. And that's really frustrating because when I was drafting this, I added an inch and a half to each edge and the bottom's 26 inches. And I just, I don't understand. But the dress itself, or the bodice itself fits and I'm quite happy with how it looks. Um, except for the interior, which, as I said, is really ugly. This is going to be fully lined, so you won't see that. I'm just going to put it on my dress form, and then I'll show you how it looks there. Here it is on the dress form. I think it looks better flat, because it doesn't really fit my dress form, but you can get an idea of how it will lay on the body. I'm not really sure what to do next. I think I might be done with the bodice for now, just because I want to do the skirt and make sure that the skirt looks good with the bodice and also because I will be rhinestoning the front portion before adding the collar. And I haven't even ordered the rhinestones for that yet, so it'll probably be another couple days. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I will see you guys in the next one. Let's see if we can get a goodbye from Gwen, too. <gasps> Do you have anything to say? Oh. That would be a no.